Coming up on By the Book, join host Dorothy Spaulding and today's leading authors with in-depth interviews, stories, and discussions, offering unique insight into the authors, their influences, and their latest works. Tune in today as Dorothy welcomes Tim's story. Be sure to watch By the Book. It's great. How did you do it? By the Book. Where did you find that? Did you see By the Book? Yeah, it's a great show. By the Book. New releases and authors? I thought it was a great read. I think I'm going to buy the book. It's the best. Did you get it? You should. Do it by the book. The best author. New releases. Let's watch. Buy the book. Welcome to Buy the Book. I'm your host, Dorothy Spaulding. And with me today, I have Tim Story. Now, many of you may know him. He's a great author here, and he's written Come Back and Beyond. Yes. But, Tim, there's people here that don't know you, so I need to How know dare about they? you. I don't know, but they need to know something about you. You're from Southern California. Yes. But what else? Born and raised in Southern California, as you said. Um, big family. Five kids, father was a steel worker, mother worked at a place called Winchell's Donut Shop. Ever heard of that? Oh, yes. Donuts. Donuts are good sometimes on <laughs> sometimes. Saturdays. <laughs> so we were a, a working class family, uh -huh. but uh, we were kind of raised in a setback environment. My father uh, struggled with alcoholism. Uh, he went to the 10th grade, mm -hmm. mother went to the 6th grade. So in the midst of, you know, Happy times, there was always a lot of drama in my family that was a little bit negative. When he came home drunk. Yes, that was not good. Were you scared? I was scared. And the, the interesting thing was is that he had so much personality. Maybe I got some of it from him. And then when he would go into that downward spiral, it just wasn't good. But then something happened. What? A lady by the name of Anne who went to Melody Land Christian Center. Yes. A white lady. Uh -huh. She was a checker at a place uh, where they used to get groceries. And she said, you need to go with me and my husband to Melody Land. And he teased and said, I've been to Disneyland. Melody. <laughs> and so uh, the husband and, and Ann took my father to church and Ralph Wilkerson preached and my father got saved and it Christ. reversed things in my God. family. So everything changed. Everything changed. Now you're in high school, college, whatever. Right. Did you live a godly life through those years? I did. I wanted to be an athlete. I, w I wanted to be an athlete and I wanted to be Bill Cosby. So it was kind of like... It was like, like, so which one did you get? Right. I was both. <laughs> so I used to listen to Bill Cosby albums, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Um, I don't think it was really so much the fear of God at that time, it was the fear of my mother. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I, I could see her. Uh -huh. but, uh, but I was a good kid. I, I wasn't up to any mischief. And, but it was 17 years of age that God really touched me. I was, I was in a meeting with a guy named Dick Mills. Do you uh -huh. remember this name? A prophetic uh -huh. gift. A lot of guys have been changed mm -hmm. through his life. And he prophesied to me. He said, you're going to be a speaker and you're gonna help people that most people can't get to. And he was prophesying my life because one day I'd be friends with Walter Matthau, uh -huh. Jack Lemon, have Lee Iacocca endorse my book. He was prophesying the Hollywood Bible study. So. Is that what you do? Well, yes, that's what I do. That's where I got it from, the Hollywood Bible yes, study. Yes, since 1992. I think that is so awesome because I pray for Hollywood people. Yes. I used to pray for Michael Jackson. Yes. But you know, with Michael Jackson, some people don't know this, I think it's important, that there's two people that were working with him. One is Rodney Jerkins, who's one of the top producers of our day. I'll be with him next Wednesday. The other one is our good friend Andre Crouch. And, and both of them prayed with him in the last few months of his life. So Praise you know, God. Who knows but by the grace of God, huh? Yes. So we'll believe the best mm -hmm. there. Because I have prayed for him for many mm -hmm. years, and I believe our, pray our prayers are answered. Yes, I do. And that God can take people like that. And Hollywood is such a place of influence. It that is. That we've got to get these people born again, hungry for yes. God. Yes, see what I think is interesting, what I love about God in this case, is that here I was into entertainment, I was a dancer, I liked energy, I was into Bill Cosby as I said, 
Isn't it like God to use me in entertainment? It is. I remember one time I was on the set of Grumpy Old M Men. Grumpy Old Men. <laughs> with, with, yeah. with Jack Lemmon. Uh -huh. And Jack Lemmon, I was sitting in his chair and, and taking care of his dog while he would do the scenes. And he said, Story, why are you a minister? You've got too much energy and you're too happy. I've never met a happy minister. And I said, Jack, there's actually a few of us out there. But, you know, I think that God gave me that desire for entertainment mm -hmm. and gave me an energy that uh, someday I would touch that crowd. So that's what we do. And that's awesome. That's why the picture, look at this picture yeah. of you on the I'm front of this on the floor. Cover. You're crawling on the floor, but look at the Because way here's you how are. most guys do their book covers. Watch. <laughs> I know. I know. So I would have been another guy like that. Kind of like on the back. Like that one. That's my point. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> That's my Urkel look. That's your Urkel look. <laughs> but I was, I, was, um, I was at the photo shoot, right? Uh-huh. And so we were doing these kind of photos. And then I noticed that the floor was super clean. And I said, I need to crawl on it. So we crawled on the floor, and then they took that picture. Well, I but, love but, it. But, but the idea of the, of the picture is, is freedom. Freedom. I'm free. And... Was there any time you weren't free? Well, I think that I didn't know it, that I was bound by things that my father went through. Mm -hmm. I did not manifest most of the things that he ever did. But later in life, I found struggles in my life where I went, how did this end up in my library? Mm -hmm. But if you go back to your past, it's amazing how many things you can find. And you had this man, Pastor Walter Hallam, on yes. your show. And he talks a lot about that, and, and his teachings have helped me about dealing with addictions and things that come from your family. But it's good to be free, and it's good to have a comeback, and that's what happened in my life. And that's why the book. Yes. Well, what, tell me some of the things that are in this book, like here, the inner cry for more. Did you have that? Yes. What happens to people is that their dreams talk to them every single day. You may lower the volume, but your dreams are talking. Uh -huh. It's good, huh? Yeah, I like the So dreams. some people, while they're taking a bath, the dream's talking. The radio goes off in the car, their dreams are talking. So the inner cry for more is what God put inside of you. I've been teaching since the late 80s. There's a difference between a good idea and a God idea. Yes. Good ideas may come to pass. God ideas, they must come to pass. And so the God idea was put in you, if we went go back to your childhood. I, I believe that. I think that you had this thing yeah. about you. You wanted to be this person. Well, in my childhood, Let's I talk always about you. said, and I'll just say this real quick, but I always said, one day I'm going to take and do something across the United States. Maybe take a covered wagon or maybe ride a bicycle, but I'm going to do something. Yes. And my husband and I walked with a wooden cross around the United States. Yes. And then I would always say, one day I'm going to be an actress. Mm -hmm. Today I'm on television every single day and have for 30 years. In a lot years. of countries. In a lot of countries. See, so God gives you the voice. When your child. Inside. Mm -hmm. He puts it inside you. That's the inner cry for more. Yeah. But what happens is that then you have momentum. Uh-huh. And what happens to people many times is they, they have a setback. It may be oh, their parents' yes. divorce. It may be an illness. It may be bad choices. And the choice creates a challenge. Mm -hmm. Now here I go rhyming, I'm gonna rhyme. Are you ready for me? I'm ready. When people have a setback, most people take a step back. Yeah. But I say this, when you're feeling the sting of your setback, God is creating your comeback. And he does, doesn't he? Yep. Through a divorce, you would never dream that this could have happened. Right. But look what God does. Yeah, and so there's a lot of people watching today that they are in a setback, Sometimes because mm -hmm. of the miscellaneous department, we don't know why, come on. Yeah. The other one is the bad choices. The third one is spiritual warfare. Yep. There's a mean enemy who does mm -hmm. not like us. Demon machine. <laughs> yes, but we prevail. Yes, we do. Yes. Because greater is he that's in us. Yes. Than he that's in the world. There's going to be a fight. There's gonna be a fight. And you have to fight for your comeback. Yes. Comebacks are not handed over 